Assalamu alaikum. All of you are welcome to our online class. I hope you are fine at home by the grace of Almighty Allah. Dear students, today I am going to take your class on chapter 8. Our today's topic is Bangladesh and her citizens. Dear students, we see that there are two key words Bangladesh and her citizens. That means in this class, you will have to learn about state and citizen. You know that Bangladesh is a state. After doing the class, you will be able to answer of these questions. What is a state? What are the components of a state? How does a state is formed? What does citizen mean? How many ways of getting citizenship? I hope all of you are ready to do the class attentively. Dear students, there was no existence of state in the primitive society. But with the basis of time, at first some city-states were formed in ancient society, such as Sparta, Athens, etc. These city states are formed five to six thousand years ago. We see that most of the city states are formed on the bank of the rivers and seas. And after reaching agrarian society, the states of the world started to form. That means modern state was formed gradually. Dear students, there are 7 billion people living in the world. These 7 billion people are living in different countries or different states and Bangladesh is also a state in the world. Now I am going to discuss on state. Everybody write in your copy what is state. What is state? A state is an organization that has a definite territory, population, government, and sovereign power. Dear students, we see that there are four components to form a state. Without any one, a state cannot be formed. The four elements of a state are population, number two, definite territory, number three, government, and four, sovereignty. Now, I am going to discuss the components of the states elaborated. The population is the first component of a state. It is a most important component to form a state. Dear students, without population, a state cannot be formed. So that the population is called the soul of a state. And the number of population is not limited. We see that in China, there are 137 crore, 20 lakh people are living according to World Population Data Sheet 2015. And in San Marino, there are only 30,000 people are living. So, we see that there are no limitation of number of population to form a state. I hope all of you have got idea about the component. Now, I am going to discuss on the definite territory. It is called the body of a state. A definite territory, a state cannot be formed. Dear students, a state includes water, air and landmass of it. And there is no limited boundary to form a state. We see that the area of the India is 32,87,590 square kilometer. On the other hand, the area of Singapore is 693 square kilometer. And the smallest country in the Europe, which is Vatican City, the area of Vatican City is only 0.18 square kilometer. 
Dear students, now I am going to discuss on the third component of our state, which is the government. A government is compared to the engine of a car. You know that without engine, a car cannot move. Like that, without a government, a state cannot run. So, it is very much important component of a government. Government makes law to maintain peace and order of the state and to regulate the people. I hope you have got idea about government. Now, I am going to discuss on the utmost power of a state which is called sovereignty. Dear students, by this power, a state can protect from other countries' intervention. And this is the utmost power or highest power of the state. This is called the supreme power of the state also. By dint of this sovereign power, a state remains on top of the individuals and organization. So, it is very much important component of our state. I hope all of you have got idea about the four components of our state. Now, I am going to discuss on Bangladesh as a state. Dear students, you know that Bangladesh is a independent country and we got our independence on 16th December 1971 through the nine months bloodletting war under the leadership of our father of the nation, Bhagavantru Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Now, I am going to discuss on the sovereignty power of Bangladesh. Dear student, our country has a sovereignty power. With this power, the state remains on top of all individuals and organizations, controls of all people and rules the country keeping free from the domination of other countries. Dear students, I hope all of you have got idea about our country. Now, I am going to discuss on the citizen and concept of citizenship. What is citizen? Dear students, permanent residents of a state are called citizen of that state. That means, a uh, inhabitant of a state should be permanent. Then he can get or she can get citizenship of that country. Dear students, there are four main features of citizen. You see that number one is allegiance to the state. That means a citizen should be loyal to his or her state. Number two, to be a permanent member of a state. He or she should be permanent. Then he or she can get citizenship of that country. Number three, to perform duties and responsibilities to the state. Dear students, every citizen has some responsibilities to the state and he or she must follow the rules and regulations of his or her state. And number four, to enjoy political and social rights from the state. Citizen also have some rights which he or she have to get from his or her state. Now, try to understand about the methods of acquiring citizenship. Dear students, there are two ways to get citizenship of any country. That are number one by birth and number two by the formal grant. According to by birth, there are another two ways. Number one, just send means and number two, just send. Now, I will discuss on just send means. What is just settlements? Dear students, according to this principle, 
the child will be the citizen of that country where its parents are citizen if the child of any parents is born in a foreign country he or she would be the citizen of his or her parents country it is called the jus sanguinis i hope you have understood now i am going to discuss on the jus sorry the another way of getting citizenship by birth that is jus sorry now i am going to discuss on a what is jus sorry dear students according to this principle a child will be the citizen of that country where he or she is born that means here the parents country is not important to get citizenship here his or her birth place is very much important to get citizenship it is called the just sorry to get citizenship by birth suppose your father and your mother are the citizen of bangladesh but you have born in us so you can be a citizen of us also again according to just sanguinis you are the citizen of your parents country also that means you are the citizen of bangladesh also dear students this type of citizenship depends on that country where you are born we see most of the countries of the world are following just sanguinis to get citizenship and according to just sorry getting citizenship is depends on that particular country where you are born or where a child is born dear students i hope you have got idea about just sanguinis and just sorry now i am going to discuss on formal grant there are some conditions to get citizenship by the formal grant such as marriage if you want to get citizenship of other country then you will have to marry of a citizen of that certain country okay purchase for getting citizenship you will have to purchase land in that country service language for getting citizenship by the formal grant you will have to do serve in that country for a long time and you will have to know the language of that country also living joins earnings good character high capability political asylum etc for getting citizenship you will have to live for long time in that country and if you can join uh, the army in your desired country then also you will have to get you can get citizenship of that country and of course having good character is a most important condition to get citizenship of a country and we see that there are some other ways also high capability political asylum if you are feeling insecure in your country then you can apply to another country to get citizenship or that country it is called the political asylum through these conditions if you can fill up more than two or three conditions you can get citizenship by the formal grant of your desired country dear students what have you learned from here i have discussed on citizen and the ways of citizenship we see that there are two ways to get citizenship number 1 by birth and number 2 by formal grant again we see that there are two ways to get citizenship by birth number 1 just sanguinis and number 2 just sorry and 
The another way is the former grant. And we see there are some conditions to get citizenship by the former grant. Now, I am going to discuss on dual citizenship. What is dual citizenship? Having citizenship of two countries is called dual citizenship. Dear students, we see that our national poet, Kaji Nusru, is the citizen of India. At a time, he is the citizen of Bangladesh also. Our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, gave him citizenship in 1974. So, he had dual citizenship. Now, I am going to discuss on the role of citizens in developing of the country. Dear students, relation between citizens and its state is inseparable. We see that the state has some responsibilities to its citizen, like that a citizen also has responsibilities and duties to its state. There are some main important responsibilities of citizen to the state. That are number one, he or she has to perform his or her duties sincerely. Number two, loyal to the state. A citizen should be loyal to the state. He or she should try to be a human resource for the country. Dear students, all citizens have to abide by the rules and regulations of the country. Pay taxes regularly. The citizens who are the eligible to pay tax, he or she has to pay tax regularly. And preserve and utilize the estate property. A citizen should preserve the property of the country and he or she has to utilize properly the resources of the country. In this class, I have discussed on the state, the components of the state, the citizen, the ways of getting citizenship and the duties and responsibilities of citizen to the state. Dear students, I hope all of you have understood properly. If you have any question on this topic, you can ask me through the comments. See you again in the next class. Allah.